In this video, we'll talk a bit about special quadrilaterals, and I've got some quadrilaterals here. Um, we'll start with a rectangle. There's nothing really too special about the rectangle, but um, because of the two triangle rule, and everybody knows that in a quadrilateral, you will get two triangles, and we know that each triangle has a sum of all angles of 180 degrees. It means that in all quadrilateral, on quadrilaterals, the sum of all angles will always be 360, which is 2 times 180. Now, this is where we get into our special quadrilaterals. Here, we have a parallelogram. It wouldn't look like that yet because I haven't put the arrows in to tell you. It's a parallelogram. So, um, obviously, double arrows tells you that these two sides are supposed to be parallel, but it's my free-handed sketch, so it's not the best. And these two are parallel. So this is a parallelogram. And what's special about this quadrilateral, um, about the angles inside this quadrilateral, is that the opposite angles are the same. So this angle would be the same as that angle here. When I say opposite, I mean along the diagonal. So you got please be sure about that. Okay, so along the diagonal. It also means that this angle here and that angle here. Um, they are also the same, and that's a special thing about a quad, um, about a parallelogram that you need to be aware of. Um, also, we've got over here um, a trapezium. Actually, before I finish off with the parallelogram, I don't know if you remember. If you don't remember your angles in parallel lines, then it might be an idea to go back and check that out. But here, this line is parallel to that line, and that's a transversal which also means now that these angles are co-interior as well, which, so you can basically say for co-interior angles that A plus B is equal to 180. If you remember your rules for co-interior angles, this two together is 180, that two together is 180, that two together is 180, and this two together is 180. So it's a really cool little um, trick about parallelograms. So, but the main thing to remember is that the opposite angles along the diagonal, they're the same size, okay? Okay, let's go to the trapezium. So on a trapezium, you know that it's a special quadrilateral as well. The two um, sides there are parallel, but it's only got one pair of parallel sides of trapezium. And what's special about the trapezium is exactly the rule I just mentioned. Because these two sides are parallel, these two angles are supplementary or they add up to 180. So A plus B is equal to 180. And it also means that these two angles here add up to 180. However, this angle with that angle, not 180. So don't get mixed up with that trick. Also, don't get mixed up thinking that this and that angle are the same. They're not the same either. Okay, so be very, very careful about that. These two angles are 180, those two angles are 180, and it's only those angles, okay? And the last one is um, a kite. So we'll talk quickly about the kite then. We know a kite when we see one. Um, there's nothing parallel in a kite, but these two sides here have the same length, and these two sides here have the same length. There's only one thing about a kite to remember, though, when it comes to the angles, and that's these two opposite angles here are the same. Okay, so similar to the parallelogram, but not exactly the same. So these two opposite angles are the same. However, this angle is not the same as that angle, so please do not make that mistake in thinking that these two angles will be the same, okay? They're not the same. All right, so those are my special quadrilaterals that we needed to pay attention to today. And now what we'll do is we'll pop on to a few questions um, just to see how you do. Okay, so here's our first example to try out. And on this example, let's find this in alphabetical order. It makes life easier for us. So we will start, first of all, by finding the x. Now, from the rule about, um, about parallelograms, this is a parallelogram. From the rule about parallelograms, remember that the opposite angles are the same. So straight away, we can say x is equal to 40 degrees. And the reason is because the opposite angles are the 
same. Okay. Now, now that we know that x is 40, um, we know that all the angles in a parallelogram add up to 360. Um, so we can basically take away this 80 from 360 to find out what the other two angles are. So basically, we'll now do, um, let me just write that down, 360, take away 80. And I got 80 because of the 40 here and the 40 there. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 280 degrees. And then all we need to do, if you haven't guessed it as yet, we will now divide this by 2. So 280 divided by 2 to equal to 140 degrees. And so it means that this is 140 here, and that's 140 there. The reason why I divided it by 2 is because these two angles are also the same. Okay, so because they are the same, when I took that away from 360, all I needed to do was basically um, half the angle that I get, half the 280 to get each of these angles. There's another way you could have worked it out. I don't know if you remember, but I've just also just shown you in the video that these two angles add up to 180, remember? And these two angles add up to 180. So the other way you could have gone is literally to say, well, 40 plus that y is 180. So y is equal to 180. Take away that 40 to give you 140 degrees. So that's another way you could have gone, and then you know that um, z will be the same as y. Okay, so... Um, here's our next question. Um, the, on this question, we have a, a, trape it's a trapezium, but there's something special about this trapezium. So we know it's a trapezium because that side and that side are uh, parallel to each other. Uh, we know that because of the arrows we can see there, I tell you that they're parallel. But it's got a line here and a line there that tells you that this trapezium is what we call an isosceles trapezium and it has some of the same rules of an isosceles triangle. Like for example, that length and that length is the same. We know that because of those two blue lines there. And if you remember your isosceles triangle, you will also know that that bottom, and that bottom angle and this bottom angle will be the same. So in order to find i first, which is what we should find in alphabetical order, we can say i plus 5 is equal to 62, which means that i, um, let's write my i properly, is equal to 62. 62, take away that 5, which is going to be 57. So we know i is equal to 57. That's one job done. Now, it's still a trapezium, and the rules of a trapezium still apply. So because these two lines are parallel to each other, it means that these two angles add up to 180. They are co-interior angles from parallel lines. So you can say that uh, J plus 62 is equal to 180. And then once we subtract the two of them, we can say j is equal to 180 minus that 62, which is going to give us 118 degrees. Okay, so that was easy. Last of all, a rule that I did not mention in this video, but you should know anyway. If this angle is 118 degrees, we've got a nice straight line here. And we know that all the angles on a straight line add up to 180. That's one way we can go. So we can take away this 118 and then get this angle here. Alternatively, I want to show you another thing that you probably didn't see here from parallel lines. We have a Z shape there which means that we have alternate angles. This angle and that angle would be the same. So loads of different ways you can go about doing this, but, well, actually two ways, as I, I can show you there. But um, let's go the easiest way, and the easiest way is using the rule of alternate angles. If you want, you can go the straight line way and say that this angle plus that angle is 180 and then sort yourself out. But anyway, I'll go the straight line way, and I will say that 2k is equal to 62. And my reason for this is because they're alternate angles. Okay, so that means that k will equal to 62. 
divided by 2, which is going to give me my 31 degrees. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, so I hope that, that was quite understandable. Okay, so we'll do one more question, and then um, we're going to call it a day. All right, on this last question, we need to find out what E is. We've got a kite, as we can see. So same length, same length, same length, same length. And we remember the rules of a kite. And the rules are, well, the one rule is this plus that angle would be the same. Okay, these two are not the same. I did mention that. Um, I forgot to mention this in the rule, though, but it's, a, it's an important thing to know, even though it does not apply to this question at all. Um, if I bring a diagonal across here like that, this diagonal will cut that 61 in half and it will cut that 101 in half as well. But that's just an aside, just so you know that that is possible. Anyway, so um, I'll leave that diagonal there, but we're not going to use it because that's just something I forgot to mention when we were doing the rules. Um, anyway, so we're going to find E. This is E plus 1, 101 degrees, 61 degrees there. All right, cool. So from my rules of a kite, I know that this is also um, uh, E plus 1. So I can put them all together and I can say E plus 1 plus E plus 1 plus 101 plus 61 all adds up to 360 degrees because it is a quadrilateral and all the angles inside must add up to 360. Okay, um, so we just combine everything together. We've got two E's there and then we can add all the bits together. 101 plus 61 is 162 plus another 2 gives us 164. So 164 is equal to 360. That means that 2e is equal to 360 minus 164. Okay, so that's going to give us that 2e is equal to 196. And then to finish the job off, we do 196 divided by 2 which is going to give us 98. And this is now done. So we've had an example of all our different quadrilaterals in this video. Um, I'm not going to give you some questions to work out on your own, but see if you can find some to practice from. And good luck to you. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you've learned something new.